Welcome fellow bookworms to Tibra's Den. My name is Whitney and today we are going to be talking about three different books. These are all by uh, authors who are have a different culture than my own. Two of these are Russian authors and one of them is a Chinese author. Um, so the main book we're talking about in this video is My Sergei by Ekaterina Gordieva with E.M. Swift. Um, this was the book that I would mainly want to talk about, but I had also read these two other books and decided to go ahead and include them all in the same video. But we're going to start here. Um, so this is the third time I reread this book. Um, and I partly wanted to because recently this video that I did last December, um, so December of 2021, like just blew up. It was getting all kinds of views and such so I thought I would reread it and kind of revisit my thoughts on this one and then like I said I read the other two as well and it was just kind of interesting reading from authors that are from a different culture than my own um the little differences and such um and even when I read like if you read like a UK author they're still English um, and yes, the culture is a little bit different, but there's a lot of similarities where these, the cultures and the politics and such are, are completely different. So we're going to start here. Um, so like I said, this is my third time rereading this. This is my Sergei, a love story. Um, and this is Ekaterina Gordieva, her story with her skating partner, Sergei Grinkov. Um, and then she had help writing this from E.M. Swift. So, um, this was my mom's favorite pair of skaters growing up, when I was growing up. Um, and I was fairly young, so when he passed away, I would have been seven or eight? I think I had just turned eight. Um... Yeah, November 20th of 1995. So um, I had just turned eight a couple months prior. And so, like I said, I was young, but I do have an impression. Like, I don't vividly remember them, but I do remember watching ice skating with my mom. And she really liked this pair. She was always rooting for them and such. And she had actually originally read this book and then encouraged me to read it when I was a teenager. Um, and I didn't really remember too much about it. I just remember I bawled my eyes out and she came in right after I finished reading it. It was like, what's wrong? And I was like, this book is what's wrong. Um, and so I read it again just over a year ago. So like I said, December of 2021. Um, I reread this and it definitely hit a lot differently now that I'm older and I'm married and such. It definitely hit a lot different last year. This year, I noticed a little bit more of like the culture and the politics and such that I didn't necessarily grasp last year, like the things that they had to go through with the coaches and um, money and such um, and just the overall like she mentions that you know when they first started skating um, it was like the Soviet Union and then that disbanded, um, and so things changed drastically which they didn't really feel because they were in America a lot of the time the US skating and touring and such so they didn't necessarily feel all those changes um, but like their parents and grandparents definitely did. So that was kind of interesting because I hadn't really picked up on that before. I was more, you know, their, their story, their love story. And I will say last time I did mention that it really was more about Ekaterina and her growth from childhood into womanhood. And Sergei just, he played a big part, but it's really her story um, and he just played a big part in that story. And I definitely still stand by that. But I did clue in a lot more to their love story itself as well. Um, so I just got a lot more out of it overall with this reread. I see myself rereading this every year. Um, I absolutely love it. And it's really nostalgic for me. Um, not only because from my childhood watching them skate and such. But because of the ties it this has to my mom, um, 
you know, she encouraged me to read this and it was always with her that I was watching him skate and such. So I definitely want to call her up and talk to her a little bit more about this pair um, and get her thoughts. But yeah, I definitely got a lot more out of it. Still made me cry. <laughs> um, uh, but I did good. It wasn't until towards the end. Uh, and just her having to navigate that. Um, and she was already, when they went from amateurs to pro, there was a lot of changes in navigations, and then when he she lost him, she was having to navigate that, and they were still kind of figuring that out, and then she lost him, and she's now having to navigate all that on her own, on top of being a mom to a, a young child, which she's having to navigate as well, um, and then try to explain to her where her dad is and such, so it's just really, really moving and heartbreaking. Um, and like I said, if you grew up, you know, in the 90s and you watched, you know, the the Olympics and such or figure skating at all, you know, they were a big part of that scene. Um, and so, yeah, just really, really nostalgic for me and still just as moving. Like I said, I picked up a lot more on the little nuances of the difference in culture and, um, and you know, just her story overall as far as womanhood and their love story. So, um, definitely very beautiful. Even if you're not a big figure skating person, um, this is still a very, very moving story. Uh, and I think a lot of people can get a lot out of it. So this is one I definitely would say to pick up and give it a try because it's just, it's beautiful. Um, but definitely have tissues handy because it's, it's heartbreaking um when she loses Sergey. So so that is my Sergey. Like I said, I absolutely loved it. And if you're watching this because of um this couple and such, you know, welcome. Um and yeah, just a beautiful story overall. So next we have the other Russian author. So I picked this up recently. I'm a little confused because in the on the um main page here it says it was published in 2022 it says first u.s edition 2022 but online this doesn't come out it doesn't get released till february 7th of this year so i'm not really sure what that is about but we went to across state lines to kind of a bigger city that's near us and went to this little independently owned bookstore and I found this and I thought it sounded interesting because um, it said otherworldly forces dark phantasmagory uh the horrors of the underground life adolescence and rebellion myth and fairy tale all swirl together in Alec Gorbanova's audacious and spectacular novel so this is called it's the end of my world my love and it's by Alec Gor Gorbanova and it's translated by Alina Alter. Um, and the cover caught my attention. And the reading the back, I was like, ooh, I think I might really like that. So it's children, students, beggars, young poets, Al Gorbanova's heroes, heroes and heroines live their lives intensely, experiencing the longing, joy, anticipation, and heartbreak of youth in 1990s St. Petersburg. But Gorbanova's interconnected episodes don't limit themselves to the realm of the everyday. As they move from harsh material realities to delirious dark fantasies, characters escape, decline, self-destruct, and transform. In vivid prose, she conjures a fragile and haunted society and renders it with frank and uncompromising tenderness. A stunning work of fiction is The End of the World, My Love, is a compassionate, terrifying, and rewarding book from an undeniable literary voice. Now, there are definitely a lot of trigger warnings for this. It really looks at the seedier and darker and more tragic side of humanity. Um, and yeah, I was not expecting that going in. Um, and the blunt way that the narrator kind of talks about this kind of thing, like... Um, definitely some intrusive thoughts as far as, like, being assaulted as a woman and such. Um, she would just, you know, I wonder if that's going to happen to me or, you know, I wondered, you know, these guys were whistling and I figured that they were going to do that to me. 
And I was just like, what's going on? And then it gets even darker. There's definitely substance abuse, um, suicidal ideation. Like, there's so many. There's almost, like, there's one character that talks about trafficking women and children. There's inappropriate relation, like, age gap relationships between older men and young girls. Um, there is one part, I think it's the second or third part, I can't remember, because it's kind of separated in parts. So the first part, you're following this narrator, um, and she's kind of talking, and then she's talking about these other characters, um, and it's a lot of, you know, she kind of dresses herself up, um, in a very extreme manner, and she kind of puts herself in situations, and then she has this relationship with this older guy, um, and, you know, talking about self-harm and such. And so it's kind of that, and then it transforms, and, like, each part, there's aspects of the other part, and, like, the characters, like, you don't really know who this character is the whole time you're reading this. Like, the whole time you don't have a clue who these ca this character is that's talking. Um, and it switches, you know, some instance it's in first person, other times it's in third person, but, like, there's like, little things, like, this one, you know, had a torn jacket, um, and then it shows up later on, um, and so it kind of transforms, but there's one part where it gets extremely dark, and it's kind of this character who's making, um, adult films, but you have an age range, um, and then it deals with murder as well within that scope, um, and of very, very young children, um, and babies and such. So I, that part was a bit rough. Um, the rest of it was also like, wow. Um, like I didn't realize that going in. And so I do want to mention that, but at the same time, there's kind of this honesty in showing that darker side of human nature. Um, and the more tragic side with the substance abuse and such, um, and the mental health issues, um, and mentioned schizophrenia multiple times, there's anxiety, uh, the third part is, like, little short stories and, like, almost poems, um, and, like, fairy tales and such, like, folklore, like, it, it it's kind of like this hodgepodge of everything, and then you get to the last part and it's, like, very straightforward narration almost, um, but again, it keeps re referencing things that, you know, the narrator talked about previous week. So that was a little bit like, I don't know. You never really know who the narrator is because then sometimes you get a name, but then it's referencing this whole storyline that you've already gone over, you know, and then you get another name as referencing that same storyline. So it was just... Like, it's a hodgepodge, for sure, and it's very, very dark. Like I said, it really strips down the darker side, the more seedier and tragic side of humanity. Um, so, I, this is definitely not a book for everyone, and there is really no plot. Um, and you never really get a resolution. Like, you still never know who this narrator is and whether it was the same person this whole time. And you don't know, like, at one point there's this forest and there's, like, two copies of this narrator. And you never really get an answer, like, did she die young? And then, you know, these are, like, different versions of her life? Or was she kind of dreaming that? Like, you never really get an answer, and it never really gives you a resolution. Um, but like I said, there's something really honest about it at the same time, you know? And I don't know, I ended up really enjoying this, which I don't know how, um, with as dark as it is, and the fact that it didn't have a plot, and there was no resolution, and it was just all over the place. I typically don't enjoy that. But this book, is going to stick with me for a long time. And it was emotional. Like I said, there was that honesty there, which is, I think, what I connected to. Um, and so, so yeah, if you want that look at the stripped down version of humanity that's darker and such and more tragic, 
you know, this is a book that does that, but this is definitely not a book for everyone. Um, but I, I'm happy that I picked this up and read it, um, even though it was quite shocking at some points for sure. So, so that is It's the End of the World, My Love by Ala Gorbanova. And this is translated by Alina Alter. Again, this comes out in the U.S. February 7th. Um, of this year so if you are interested that's when you can get it but you can go ahead and pre-order it I will also say I was looking at the publication page and it's Deep Vellum Publishing um, and it's a non-profit literary arts organization uh, and it was founded in 2013 with the mission to bring the world into conversation through literature and in the back there's a whole list which I thought was really, really cool. Um, there's a whole list. It has, like, people that are partnering. But available now and then forthcoming. And it has, like, a bunch of different translated work um, from different areas. So you have France, you have South Korea, Mexico, Argentina, another Mexico. There's some from the U.S., Romania, Indonesia, Denmark. Um, you have one that's Iran, Iraq, Libya, um, S Somalia, Sudan, si Syria, and Yemen. Um, so, yeah, like all kinds of different places. Turkey, Peru, Norway, um, the Netherlands. Like, I think that's really, really cool. I'm definitely going to be looking into some of these titles and trying to get my hands on them. And plus, you're supporting a non-profit um, organization that's trying to bring, you know, conversation through through literature which I think is pretty cool so um, I had never heard of them before and so I thought that was definitely interesting I need to do more research like I said I just have from what I saw there but I thought that was pretty interesting now we're going to move over to China I'm going to try I, I looked it up again I struggle every time so Chu Ziong um is the author so it's a Chinese author and this is a case of two cities so this is actually like a detective novel um, with the Chen gets is a police detective and he gets assigned a high-profile anti-corruption case and it takes him from Shanghai to the US this one is another one like it was very anticlimactic um, and it didn't really feel like there was a resolution and what there was, it was just kind of, that's it. Um, but other than that, it reads like a detective novel, but you do have a look kind of at the, the Chinese politics, which there were some things that I uh, was like, that's really how it is there. Like, wow. Um, and so yeah, I didn't know, you know, I'm not familiar with it. And so, yeah, that was kind of interesting, like, the whole housing thing and such. Um, and, like, he's a, he's a police officer, but he's also a writer. And the writers are kind of, this writer delegation is controlled by the government. And then they get sent to the U.S. Um, and they get only so much money. And, like, they're not allowed to get take more money with them like they can only take a certain amount which I thought was really interesting and I don't you know know how accurate everything was but I'm assuming you know pretty accurate since he is Chinese um and so yeah this read like a detective novel except it was very anticlimactic and it had a lot of the Chinese politics in there and then also just the phrasing and how things were said there was a lot of proverbs and a lot of poetry um which was a little bit rough for me but overall it was actually pretty enjoyable um I just it was different for me and I did struggle through it a little bit because it was so different from what I was used to but it also had that detective novel feel, which I'm familiar with. Not my favorite, um, but I am familiar with it. And so that did help me out as well because there was something familiar about it. Um, but yeah, I would say like it's very, very different <laughs> than what I'm used to. Um, and so it, it did put me out of my comfort zone a little bit. Um, I did only give this one a three star, mainly just because the 
how anticlimactic it was. Um, that kind of, like, I don't know what that ending was. Um, it is part of a series too, but reading the synopsis for the next series, it doesn't sound like this gets any more resolved than it already has been. So I'm not really sure that I'm interested in continuing on with that series. Um, I will say I did give this one, um, four stars, even though it was a little all over the place and such. The writing in this was just, I don't know, like I said, it was very honest. Um, and then this one, of course, gets five stars. As always, I absolutely love this one. And um, it was a reread for me. So those are the three books that I wanted to talk about today. Uh, I'll go ahead and leave you here. Let me know if you like fully read um, books from like other cultures and such um, that were translated, not necessarily, you know, a Chinese author. I mean, this one... This one wasn't translated. He speaks and writes English, um, but it had, like I said, that presence, that Chinese like political presence and such. Um, so yeah, just let me know if you've read any books. I know a lot of people try to read books from different authors that aren't from their own country. Um, so let me know your experience with that, and I'll go ahead and leave you guys here. Happy reading, everyone. Bye.